Hey everyone, this is me, Time Liar G, and welcome to my video on RuneScape mysteries, oddities, rumors, trivia, and secrets. So, this is my favorite thing about video games in general. It's just these rumors that people make, and uh, even more interestingly, things that turn out to be true are things that developers put into a video game that make you wonder why it's in there. Because uh, sometimes developers put things in games that serve no purpose. Uh, even with a lore-building perspective on it where, uh, you know, I get um, environmental storytelling, but even then, it feels like a developer was planning to actually add something but never did, just unused areas, that all that sort of stuff. Uh, that has always interested me, it, um, especially when I was younger, when I first started playing RuneScape in very late 2005. I always say 2006 because... Uh, I started playing, it, it was so late in 2005, it may as well have been 2006, so that's why I say that. Um, you know, I don't I don't count that I that I played in 05. I'm not an 05 player, I started in 06. So, yeah, there, there's a few things off the top of my head, and you're going to start to realize that this video is not uh, scripted. I don't like scripting videos. I'm, I said this a lot of times in the past, but I just like rambling on. Uh, some of the things that I can think of is uh, really deep in the wilderness, there's this this metal ship that might have been used during the God Wars, like Xeros or something, but there's this ship. I have no idea when this was added to the game, by the way. I am a RuneScape archiver historian, but I I have no idea when this was added to the wilderness. Uh, it's, it might have even always been there. Uh, you know, not, not in RuneScape Classic, obviously, but, you know, just like RuneScape 2. Uh, there's this metal ship in the wilderness that is in the, in the deep, deepest part of the wilderness off the coast, right near the uh, wilderness volcano. Um, it's not at the volcano, it's right near it. It's just floating off the coast and it just serves no purpose. And uh, there's also the anvil in the wilderness as well. Makes you wonder why it's there. There's just a random anvil. And you know, not, not everything needs a purpose, obviously. Like I said, you know, environmental storytelling and whatnot, it just makes you wonder. Um, yeah, but there is a lot of unused stuff over the years that I have found that I saw online from other people. Uh, and we're going to get into that. And it's just stuff that I thought about when I was younger, when I was playing in 2006, which was a long time ago. I'm 26 right now. Um, you know, I was born in 1997. I... I was very young when I first started playing RuneScape. You know, I can't do math properly, but I was extremely young, and it, it had such a mystical feeling back then. Even just looking at the items in your inventory, it felt like it had impact. It's just really, it felt really mystical, and it, you know, obviously when you're playing old school RuneScape today, it, you there's no, no feelings like that anymore. But when you were playing back then, um, it just. Even if you hop on, uh, you know, I, I just for legal reasons, I don't condone private servers, but when you hop on, like, a private server, if you do, uh, you know, I, I do actually kind of get those feelings back, like, about the intrigue and mystery. Um, even though that private servers are not perfect replicas, they're just using using cache files, um, you know, it's just, it, it's just a replica, but still, the feeling's still there. Just something about the old sprites, the old textures... I just love all that kind of stuff, but I, again, I'm rambling on, so I guess we can start with the mysteries now. So our first topic here is about the golden tools that you can get during the Priest and Peril quest, and um, that's the reason why this is so intriguing. It's, it's something that you can get. It's not required, and uh, it's actually very jarring because if you miss out on these golden tools after the quest, you can't go back and get them, and even during some portions of the quest, you can't get them anyway. It's only during a specific scene in which you can grab these golden tools. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that one room where, you know, uh, it has a whole bunch of pillars. It's outside of Drezzle's room uh, where the guardian dog is, you know, that that stone-looking dog there. I don't really know if it's made out of stone. It's kind of kind of odd-looking, but... Yeah, it's in the room with all those pillars. Um, yeah, you can exchange those those items with like regular items. So you can bring like a regular tinder box, a regular pot and exchange it with a gold pot or a gold tinder box and needle and hammer and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so you can exchange these and it's just, 
it, it is just so bizarre because they don't do anything. You can't use the pots, you can't put flour in it. Uh, you can't use the hammer for smithing, so it doesn't show up when you're actually hammering on things. It doesn't work like a regular hammer. They're just all these cosmetic tools, but they're not really cosmetic because you can't use them. They're just a placeholder in your bank. I don't know if you guys actually collect quest items like I do, but uh, I try to collect as many quest items as possible. And uh, on the last few characters I made, on my hardcore Iron Man that I made, I never... Um, you know, I forgot to pick these up. You know, I just... Maybe I didn't forget me, I just, you know, didn't feel like it, but... Yeah, I always felt like this is affecting something in your character if you pick those things up as well, which is my second topic here. So I'll just stay focused on the gold tools for now, even though I don't really have much to say about them. But, uh, yeah, you can just snag these gold tools, and if you don't do this, and you continue with the quest, uh, there's a certain variable that goes off. Uh, during the quest that doesn't allow you to pick them up after the fact. So if you try to go out, uh, if you try to go over and pick up these items, uh, your character will say something. I forgot what the exact dialogue was, but your character will literally say uh, something along the lines of, you know, it would probably be bad if I took these. Something bad would happen if I took these, or something like that. Um, <laughs> like, uh, what does that even mean? Was he going to get cursed or something? What I thought when I was younger, when I was a kid, I thought that there was some type of hidden luck stat in the game. That if you would do something or make bad decisions during quests that seem inconsequential, like they don't do anything, I thought that it was lowering uh, something in the game, like some type of luck stat. Now, obviously, I don't think that they would put something as severe as a... Um, you know, like an item drop rate increase or decrease, because people would probably start noticing that. Uh, m maybe not, you know, if it's something server-side that they, the players can't see. You know, if they're trying to look at, like, cache files, obviously they wouldn't get anything out of that. But I think it's actually possible if they did put a hidden stat like that in the game. Maybe not as severe as a drop rate decrease, but... You know, something is going off there if you pick up those golden items. And that's, that's something that I always thought when I was younger. And it's not just in this quest either, like other decisions that you make, like taking quest items out of quests, uh, dialogue options, just stuff like that. I always thought that was something in the game, just like a hidden luck stat. Because uh, this entire situation with those golden tools is very strange. Because if you have something in the game that you can obtain like that, but you can't use them, that seems like a choice that's affecting something. Because, uh, you know, I, I never understood that. Why can you not use the golden tools that you actually, like, smuggled out of this quest that are... <laughs> it's, it's just such an odd situation, but... Yeah, that's, that's about it for this topic. Unless I can think of something else. Yeah, there was uh, something else I was going to mention as well, but I just forgot. I'm just adding this in editing. Uh, there was those two quests, the Temple of Ikov and the Hazil Cult quests. And, you know, those both of those quests allow you to make a decision and you get different items out of them depending on your choice. Now, for the Hazil Cult quest, you can get that Carnelian armor, which is, it looks exactly the same as the uh, Castle Wars, like, Tier 1 armor where it's, like, the red and blue. Um, I think, if I'm remembering properly, that it has the same stats as an iron chest plate, the Carnelian armor. Um, you know, and the Castle Wars armor as well. Uh, I think the tiers were... I I'm pretty sure the gold's armor only went up to Admin, if I'm remembering properly. Uh, you know, there's this a lot of stuff to remember. Um, even though, like, you know, I'm an archivist and everything, uh, I do have a bad memory, which is a bad combination, I know. But uh, there was some really weird stuff with that... Uh, those quest items in specific. Like, I have it written down on my post right here, but... Um, the Hazel Mark item is red in the RS2 beta. Uh, it's yellow in 2004, and then they turned it to white in OSRS. <laughs> Very strange. And the Armadil, uh, Armadil Pundit is white on male characters, but red on female characters. And the, uh, the Lathus Amulet, which was removed from the game in 2004, also has the same model as the Amulet Pendant. But when, uh, 
it's equipped, it's red on both male and female characters. It's just... There's something very strange with quest choices and quest items that, that are like changed over time, and it's 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 such an odd thing. Uh, I I don't know. It's just the fact that you can make choices like that is very very interesting. So for this next topic here, we have the Blurberry Badge and the Gion Badge. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that second name properly, but I'm trying my best here. Uh, the Blurberry Badge was supposedly released in 2002, and it was found in the cache or, you know, code of RuneScape Classic, RS1, RSC. Uh, and it could never be obtained. Nobody, you know, was seen uh, actually obtaining this. Uh, nobody's taking pictures of it in their inventory or banks. Um, it, it's a very strange item. Nobody knows how it's even obtained, if it's possible to be obtained. Uh, almost no information about it, and that's another reason why this is going to be a short one. We're going to have a few short topics on this list. There's nothing really to say about it. The uh, Gian badge says, uh, an official Gian chef. Um, and what was the, the other one? I forgot what it actually said. Uh, but, yeah, no, it's just supposedly this item that could have possibly existed, it was just maybe that rare. Uh, but more than likely it's just an unused item. And, you know, I, I don't know if it would actually appear on the character either if you would wear it. Because in RuneScape Classic there wasn't really that many cosmetic items, you know. Uh, even the, uh, you know, like the Dragon Sword, for example, it was just a regular sword except red. Uh, even though it had a unique icon in the game like a unique sprite. Um, you know, you had the Legends cape, which was unique than all the other capes, because uh, I think in Classic it had, uh, like, a gold gold trimming on, like, the top. I might be wrong on that, but that's what I remember anyway. Um, which, uh, by the way, just as another note, it was actually funny when the Legends cape was uh, put into RS2 during the beta, it was literally just... A blank, a blank white cape. It just looked like a cloth that you were wearing on your back. It looked really bad. Um, you know, you you had the the dragon square shield, which had like no designs on it. It was just a red shield. Looked like any other square shield. Uh, no, no cosmetic items, pretty much, except for the holiday items. You know, you got the party hats and Santa hat, bunny ears, scythe. Uh, you had a very small amount of cosmetics, so that'd be interesting if that could actually be seen on the character, but I don't think it could have been. Um, yeah, I just, I, I can't really think of anything else to say on this, so we can just move on to the next item. Uh, you know, obviously it was probably going to be gotten just like, uh, y you know, just during the uh, gnome cooking minigame, gnome restaurant minigame. So this is an even shorter one. This is about the sweets from the 2005 Halloween event. I've always wondered why Jagex decided to keep the purple ones for use in clue scrolls and everything, you know. They had green, pink, red, white, blue, dark blue, and then they had the purple sweets from the 2005 Halloween event. What, what made them... You know, they could have just kept them all in the game. What made them choose purple ones specifically? Is it because... You know, purple is seen as, you know, like a high tier kind of color, you know, it's like royal. It's a royal color, uh, I don't know, but... Yeah, maybe they just chose it because, you know, uh, party, like the party hat colors and how purple is like the rarest one. Just maybe stuff like that. Um, yeah, what I was also wondering was, you know, they seem to actually be based off the party hat colors except for... Uh, like, th there's two blue colors with the sweets, so obviously maybe they meant for another party hat to exist, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe they're, like, reusing ideas or something is what I'm trying to say. I don't know. I'm just, just, just talking about stuff. Maybe there's a connection there between the party hat colors and the sweets colors. Not too sure. Uh, it, it is weird that there's like a blue and a dark blue, but there's no other variations of colors. It's just, there's two blue ones. Maybe I'm thinking too much into it. Uh, also, there's, uh, I added this in my blog post, but 
Uh, there was a rumor of a black party head existing in RuneScape Classic RS1. Uh, and it's it's a really funny rumor because, I, I mean, people would have just seen it. <laughs> you know, there would be screenshots of it. Uh, when that Kite Neek situation happened, uh, he would have saw it in the, you know, code of the game, basically. But uh, yeah, there was just a Black Party Hat rumor saying that uh, Jagex at one point turned the Black Party Hats into purple or white ones months after release. It's just, uh, it was just pretty funny. So this is a really interesting one. So we have the Ring of Wealth here, which uh, is an item that, you know, affects the rare drop table slots. If I'm remembering properly, it gets rid of the nothing drops on the rare drop table. So you're always guaranteed to hit the rare drop table. It doesn't mean you're going to get rare items. It just means that, you know, you, you have a 100% chance to actually get something from it rather than it landing on an empty slot space, which I guess that does make you more likely to get a rare item off the rare drop table, but, you know, it doesn't really affect drops how some people think it affects drops. Uh, the thing about this is some people think that it has an effect on clue scroll caskets, and the reason why some people think this is there was some live stream uh, I, I think it was 2016 or 2017, I don't remember, but a Jmod on a live stream. It was a kind of like a QA and a um, about RuneScape theories and rumor, or not not really rumors, but just, um, what, what would you call it? Uh, just ideas that players had about the game. Uh, myths and rumors, basically. Yeah, no, no it, it is rumors. Yeah. So, one of the questions was that does the Ring of Wealth affect Clue Scroll Caskets, and like eventually one of the Jame mods after everybody voted on what they, if like a yes or no, like do, do people actually think it has an effect? Um, you know, everybody said no, but then the J mods like actually all like, maybe not all of them, I think like two of them agreed that there was actually an effect on Clue Scroll Caskets, but it was so small that you wouldn't notice a difference. Uh, from all of what I know, all my knowledge on RuneScape, this has n never been the case in, like, you know, RS2. Uh, obviously, you know, there was no such thing as a Ring of Wealth in RuneScape Classic, because you couldn't enchant rings. But, um, it, it, just even in OSRS as well, there's, there's, I, I highly doubt that was ever a thing. Um... <laughs> And if it was, that probably has to be some of the most obscure knowledge about RuneScape ever, because it's been hidden from the player base this long. And I, I think maybe players would notice it, because I always used to actually wear a Ring of Wealth when I was opening Clues Troll Caskets, and, you know, I didn't notice a difference, but who knows, maybe there, maybe there is a small chance that the Ring of Wealth actually affects them. Just really interesting stuff. I mean, the rare drop table in general has always been weird to me. Uh, it, it did exist in RuneScape Classic. Um, and that, that's like one of the ways you get a Dragon Med Helm as well. Uh, it, at least if I remember correctly, that should be a part of the rare drop table back then as well. Because uh, I remember you can you, people used to farm uh, fire giants in RuneScape Classic uh, to get a Dragon Med Helm. Instead of going to KBD, which, I mean, you know, obviously it's better just to go to KBD. Uh, yeah, it is It is very strange. And those J mods weren't joking either. They were completely serious. Like, you could tell, like, the looks on their faces. There was no laughing. Uh, there was they, they weren't joking. Uh, someone even, like, walked by and also agreed. Like, another employee. So, I, I don't know. That... If they were actually just trolling, they had the best... I mean, to be fair, it was Mod Reach that said that. Uh, at least I think it was Mod Reach. Um, best actor ever if he was actually messing with the players. Best actor ever. So this next point here is about the spinach roll. And this is an item that, you know, I am very familiar with. Because I do remember the scams back in the day of players saying... Uh, you know, it's basically like a discontinued holiday event because you get it from Christmas crackers and everything, but, um, you know, you could get it from uh, Wizard Treyborn, uh, Moss Giants, 
Uh, there was that one salesman near Waterfall you could get it from for like one GP. All that stuff was at, you know, and the crystal chest as well, but all that stuff was added later. Uh, you could only get the Spinadrol, if I'm remembering properly, from Wizard Treyborn at the Wizard's Tower. And this actually used to give, uh, supposedly, I mean, there's forum posts of people actually discussing the boost, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that this did actually exist. Uh, th it gave a 5 plus strength boost, which supposedly stacked with a strength potion, and it might have even stacked with other spinach rolls, uh, similar to the infinite beer strength boost glitch. Um, you know, it is, it's just such a, such a strange item. Honestly, it is such a strange item. And the strength boost makes sense, too, you know, because it, it's like Popeye, you know, just eating spinach. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I don't really know why they actually added this to the game or, like, why you could only get it from Wizard Trayborn. Oh, and another place you could eventually get it from was, of course, Random Events, and that's, you know, I... <laughs> I didn't fall for the scams because, you know, I I did eventually get a uh, a spinach roll from a random event. Uh, you could also get them from Legends Quest as well from those strange barrels. Those had a lot of strange items in them. You know what? Uh, I'm actually going to add this to the list, uh, those strange barrels, because... Uh, oh, and the, uh, the zombies from Tarn Slayer, too. I don't know if you guys remember those. Uh, both those things have very strange drop tables. Very strange. But, uh, yeah, eventually this thing stopped giving a strength boost. Uh, before the, uh, before December in 2001. It, somewhere before then. It's not sure when, but... Before that point, the strength boost was definitely removed. Uh, there's forum posts of people trying to stockpile these. Uh, for use in, like, PKing and everything. So it's, it's pretty funny, like everybody's just trying to collect these as much as possible and they just remove the strength boost. Really, really strange stuff. So this one is about a mysterious character here named Manzara the Monkey. Uh, this monkey was released with the Monkey Madness quest where at the very end of the quest when you're fighting the jungle demon, um, there's like some place in the back that you can go to like you know when you're fighting on that platform i forgot if it was above the platform or below it but there's like a hidden cave where you're fighting like the final boss of the quest and when you go inside this cave there's just a monkey there named banzara and he's dressed in purple which uh, i always thought uh it was connected with like zeros but uh, it does have the symbol of marimbo on it so you know maybe not but um yeah, uh, you know what, I, I'm actually just reading now that uh, on my blog post I, I mentioned that uh, he can actually only be encountered after you defeat the jungle demon. I'm not sure if I'm correct on that part. Uh, you know, I just, this is just stuff I had written in my notes for a very long time, but uh, I could be incorrect on some of this stuff. I just want to point that out. So my apologies, just tell me if I'm wrong on something and, you know, I'll go back and fix it. Uh, and I, I have written down here that, you know, Monkey Madness was released on December 6th of 2004, but Banzara was released uh, on February 22nd, 2005. I'm not sure what the deal with that is. Um, sometimes I get my date from the wiki, which the wiki can sometimes be wrong. Uh, some stuff comes from my own personal archive, some stuff I get from the wiki. Um, yeah, like... If there's stuff in my archive that I'm kind of questioning, I'll go over and check the wiki just to make sure to see if, you know, I can compare the two and see if one's wrong, one's not. Uh, the bad thing is I can't tell what what's which is wrong and which isn't because, you know, either I'm wrong or the wiki's wrong. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Benzara was in the game's cache on the same release date as Monkey Madness, so it, it might just be a little bit... a little bit of a mistake. Uh... Yeah, so what this uh, Banzara does is he teleports you to the northern woods of Apatol if you tell him that you need help. Um, and you can see the conversation here if I'm showing my blog. Uh, when you select to be teleported, uh, at least I think that's the option. You know, I'm kind of just skimming through this. And I, I can't remember some things off the top of my head as well. But uh, he says, we will meet again, and then he says the player's name after he teleports you. 
or you choose some specific dialogue option, which uh, whatever that means. Um, some people think he's a reference to Bonsai Buddy because he like helps you out, he teleports you, but I have no idea, no idea. I mean, Monkey Bandus was created by uh, one of those like interns that they hired for like a few months. Uh, they were like hiring a whole bunch of random people to come into the offices and work. That's how like Desert Treasure was made. Which, uh, that quest was, like, entirely different at first until, you know, that guy either, like, left or got fired or something. Uh, they, they had a whole bunch of crazy stuff in there. Yeah, it, it's just, it, it's bizarre. It's, I, I don't know what to say about this, this character. Uh, there was, I, I didn't write this on the blog, but there was another character that uh, I didn't know about. Apparently there was a monkey that was... Uh, showing like an advertisement for uh, what was it Daga his name is like Daga that sells the dragon scimitars um, he is a little monkey boy that walked around Varrock Square with a sign that advertised like the dragon scimitar or just the scimitar shop on Ape Atoll uh, on the release of the monkey madness quest to like promote it to have other people to you know be become aware of the quest and it was removed shortly after I thought that was interesting so I'll just combine both of these points into one, but in uh, RuneScape Classic there was these three unused runes, uh, the Time Rune, Reality Rune, and Illusion Rune. Nothing is really known about these, uh, what they would have been used for. Uh, maybe they had something to do with the Life Rune as well, considering that one unused, that was supposed to be used for necromancy or uh, some kind of summoning back in the day. So, you know, maybe they had something to do with that, I'm not sure. Uh, it just says an incredibly rare master room when you would examine it, so not really too sure on that. But uh, yeah, here's some, you know, altered content, removed content, unused stuff. Uh, you know, most of this unused stuff is found through the game's cache, obviously. Uh, I have a whole bunch of caches saved in my own archive. Uh, I think some caches are not even uh, listed on the... Uh, sites where there, there's this one project that people are running where they're trying to find a whole bunch of caches and stuff and like archive RuneScape entirely and you know it sounds selfish but I don't normally uh, release what I have in my archive at least all of it some stuff I'll post what I have in my archive some stuff I don't um, now I'm going to be talking about something later on but uh, some people were uh, stealing are just like taking what I have and my, you know, obviously the archive stuff uh, belongs to Jagex. It doesn't belong to me, obviously, but someone was like stealing my footage. They were just, uh, you know, taking what I'm saying online, like what I'm posting in my own archive and like, you know, I compile this stuff. I make videos on stuff. There's people stealing my footage, uh, specifically just one guy. And... You know, I don't like mentioning names or anything, so I won't get into it, but... Yeah, I don't often like to share what I have saved and archived regarding RuneScape. And uh, certain other games as well, but... Yeah, anyway, um, in one of these cache discoveries, there was an unused model of the Dragon Full Helm that was supposed to be released with the Fremenic Isles quest, so... Uh, I don't know if these were just part of, like, the same update, or it's actually not a coincidence that they were part of the same update. So maybe the Dragon Full Helm was... Uh, instead of doing that, like, weird barbarian, like, burial stuff with the chewed bones that you get from Mithril Dragons, maybe you're supposed to get the Dragon Full Helm another way? Not entirely too sure, but, uh, the Dragon Full Helm... Uh, once came in two parts. You were like the dragon square shield. You were supposed to get the dragon full helm in two parts. Uh, maybe you even needed to complete from Isles to equip it. I'm not really too sure. But this dragon full helm design, that one unused, is wild. It is just crazy looking, and I actually love it a whole lot. Uh, I said on the, my blog it looks like a character from Knights into Dreams. Like it looks like a Riala Knights or Jackal. Just looks like one of those hoods. Um, it has like the crazy, uh, I, I don't know, I guess like horns coming out of it. Not really, they're not really horns, they're, it, it, <laughs> the, the entire helm is just crazy looking. I'll have it up on the screen then. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very strange. Um, you had the elemental longsword, 
which was supposedly a reward from the Elemental Workshop quest instead of the shield, or maybe the shield was supposed to be in there at the same time, I'm not sure. Uh, its item description said, a razor sharp elemental longsword. And I have a few screenshots of the Gowers testing out items or just testing out the RS2 beta. And uh, you could actually see it in their inventories as well. And maybe if I could find those screenshots in my archive, I'll, set up, I'll uh, put them up on the screen here. But uh, yeah, it's just a bright purple sword that looked pretty cool. Um, I think it was the like same... It, it, just, it was just like a regular sword. It wasn't like a long sword or anything. It was just a regular sword. So, uh, yeah. You know what? This isn't part of my blog post, but I figured I'd point it out. Uh, there were rumors of a... It was like a Mandela effect kind of thing. Where some players remember getting a blue right scimitar. And uh, I, I don't know where this rumor comes from, but there are some posts about it online of players remembering that, you know... They, they just remember getting a blue right scimitar from the uh, Knight Sword quest. Which, I mean, I mean, you get the blue right crossbow, I, I don't know when they added that, but that is such a weird item as well. Uh, I think that was added much later on, because, you know, I, I don't remember a blue right crossbow back in the day. But maybe that's just me. Yeah, it's just very, very strange stuff there. You know, blue right crossbow, I'm not sure why they added that. So I'll just go through some of these quick. There was a Soul Talisman, which, you know, wasn't added for obvious reasons, but uh, there was no Blood Talisman, actually, which I find pretty strange. You know, maybe they just never expected for uh, Blood Runes to never be crafted. Uh, they most definitely had a plan for Soul Runes to be craftable, though, considering there was a Soul Talisman and Tiara in the game, which, uh, oddly enough, the Tiara came later at a different date, but... Uh, yeah, it was on uh, June 13th, 2005 is when the Soul Tiara was added to the cache. But the Soul Talisman was added during the RS2 beta, so... Uh, I would say they definitely had plans for Soul Runes to be craftable back then. And a uh, really interesting one, I have no idea if this was just a placeholder, it probably was. But in RS2, with the uh, Death Plateau quest, there was a horseshoe... Uh, it literally just, not horseshoes, but like horseshoe, in place of the spiked boots. Um, no, no idea uh, if that would have been crafted into something like horseshoe boots or something. Not sure how you would climb a mountain with those, but yeah, I mean the climbing boots obviously make more sense, so. Just, just something really weird. There is also, um, you know, since we're talking about the Birthorp area... Uh, instead of those those balls used during the uh, the quest, it was going to be pots instead, like colored pots instead of the balls, which is uh, pretty odd, pretty odd stuff. Um, what else is there? There's uh... oh yeah, by the way, the horseshoe is literally just had the appearance of desert boots. A lot of RS2 beta items had placeholder items as their own sprites, so. You know, that, that does actually make sense. Yeah, there's just uh, early designs for, like, the Secret Way map as well. Just, uh, just uh, some strange stuff there. Um, you know, RS1 and RSC had a few unused items that are actually very interesting. Uh, I think some were actually just discovered recently, such as crowns. Uh, crowns were supposed to be... These party hat looking... They, they look a little bit different than party hats. Uh, they're supposed to be like jewelry, just like necklaces and rings are. And nobody really knows why they're unused and why they never use them, but... Uh, you could actually apparently change the color of the gem in the center according to the RuneScape Classic Wiki. Not sure if that's true. It, in my opinion, it probably would have just been crafted with a gem. So you had, a, you had like a diamond crown, an emerald crown... Stuff like that. Uh, only the gem color would change, though. Uh, yeah, I can show a sprite of that up on the screen then as well. It's just s something very, very strange with the development of the game. And, uh, you know, since only necklaces were enchantable, it's kind of... It's, it, it's kind of strange why they were even bothering to add crowns when rings didn't do anything yet either. Maybe that's why it was cut. 
which uh, that's also speculated by whoever wrote that um, RuneScape Classic wiki page as well. Uh, there is a present, which uh, nobody knows what it's about. Uh, it has like an open option, but the examine text says click to use on a friend. Uh, it was maybe going to be used for the 2002 Christmas event. Nobody really knows. Uh, there is something that looks very, very similar to it. It has the same ribbon color, the same box color almost, as the uh, bobble box from the 2005 Christmas event. So... Uh, I, I really want to know what was actually inside that, by the way. Uh, someone on the RSC wiki speculates that it might have contained a Santa hat or something. No idea. No clue. And then you have the Mace of Zamorak. Has a 8 aim and 6 power. Don't, don't know what the point of that is. Maybe... Maybe a quest weapon? Um... Not really too sure. Has very high, uh, well, I mean, you know, high for RuneScape Classic Alc rate, which is 2,700. Would be kind of weird for a quest item to have that, which is why I thought it wouldn't be a quest item at first. Um, you know, the Silver Light has a high Alc value of 30. Uh, both of these items are tradable, by the way. Which, you know, that was actually common for quest items back then. For them to actually be tradable. Uh, but yeah, it has the same stats as an Iron Mace. And there is something extremely similar called the Bloody Axe of Zamorak. has the same story of the mace, but it has 9 aim and 13 power, which is the same as an Iron Battle Axe. But this one actually has a unique sprite to it. So my theory is that, uh, you know, the mace was just a test item for a quest. Um, you know, and... The Bloody Axe of Zamorak is probably a more finalized version for this quest that was probably cut from the game, or maybe the quest wasn't cut, but just the item was, because this, this Bloody Axe of Zamorak has a unique sprite not seen anywhere else in the game. And it has a high alc value of 3,000, by the way. But uh, the Bloody Axe of Zamorak is actually not tradable, which is interesting. Now I'm going to talk about some test slash developer slash jmod items. And I'm not going to mention the Rotten Potato, because everybody already knows about that. So, let's just talk about RuneScape Classic stuff first, RuneScape 1. Let's uh, talk about the Super Chisel. This was an item that had the same uh, icon, like sprite, as the Unstrung Diamond Amulet. It also had the same High Alc value as well. Uh, and it had the option Twiddle, and I, n nobody knows what that would have done. Uh, you're, that's going to be like a common thing here with these... Jmod items, uh, nobody really knows what the, uh, you know, options actually do, uh, except for some of them that spell it out, like Crunchy Staff, which we'll get to. Uh, but yeah, there's another item like this called the Reset Crystal. It has a darker blue sprite than the Locating Crystal, which is pretty strange. I don't know why they actually made a separate sprite for a test item, but that's, that's pretty odd. Um, yeah, it has an option called Activate. And it says, helps reset things in the game. Uh, I have no idea what this would have done. I mean, maybe it would reset quests somehow? I kind of I kind of doubt that, but you never know. Uh, they had that thing when the RuneScape 2 beta was launched where you could actually reset quests for a short time. There was like some NPC that helped you do that. But uh, I think that NPC was located in the Legends Guild for some reason. I could be wrong, though. I, I think I heard that from somewhere. Don't know where, but... Uh, yeah, there was... I, I think there was another test item in RuneScape Classic that I'm not remembering right now. That's not written on my blog either. But uh, on to RuneScape 2, we got the Crunchy Staff. You know, named after Crunchy himself. And uh, this one would teleport the player in any direction. It doesn't matter if there's actually an object in the way, because your character would actually go up a level and stand on top of that object. Uh, so you could, like, go outside of the map with this, explore... Um, I've actually had someone use something similar on me in a private server once, which was, uh, it was actually pretty fun. Uh, he brought me to some island on, uh, uh, where, where was it? It was, like, right outside of the dig site, right between Mauritania and the dig site, so that was pretty neat. Seeing, like, unused islands and everything. Not, not unused, but I guess Jagex put that there for scenery and whatnot. 
But uh, yeah, the staff was added to the game in December of 2003. Uh, not sure. Uh, I, that, that must be December 1st, because that's when all the other, you know, that's, that's when the beta first came out. So yeah, it had the funny examine text of avoid contact with eyes. And uh, it had all the directional stuff you can do. Uh, something interesting, though, is it actually had a high ALK value of 600,000 and the regular item value of 1 million, which was the most expensive item in the game at the time. Uh, you know, not... I, I don't mean, like, you know, most expensive in terms of player economy. I mean that in terms of the actual item value, what it was worth on death. You know, like, what d determines what items would drop, what wouldn't, you know. You have, like, protect item on all that, all that sort of stuff, so... Um, yeah. So that's, that's was there for, like, death mechanics, I think. Uh, and shop values, obviously. Uh, I don't know what you would actually get if you sold that to a shop, though, because I'm not familiar with how shops actually work. Uh, and the staff doesn't have a unique appearance, by the way, it's just the staff of air. And I also have a few screenshots of one of the Gowers, uh, using this staff as well. I'm uh, not using it, but they have it in their inventory, and you can see all the options on it. And uh, as I said right there, I'm not going to mention the Rotten Potato, because everybody already knows about that. <laughs> and we have Ian's Helper, which is a, uh, <laughs> it just looks like a RS2 beta Christmas cracker, and it says click for options. Um, it had an operate option, but nobody knows what it actually did. And the reset crystal makes a return from RuneScape 1, RuneScape Classic, to the RS2 beta. And it has the same exact appearance as a locating crystal. And nobody knows what it does, as, you know, most of these items actually, you know, no, nobody really knows what most of these items actually do. And we got the helpful device. I think this was the one that was the skull item. Uh, let me see. Yeah, it looks exactly like the RS2 beta skull. And the examine text says not for children. And the options are heal me, equip me, and kill me. And you also have the drop option, obviously. Has no high alk value, I'm assuming that's because it's probably the same value as the skull, which is just nothing, just worthless. Uh, it was added um, to the game somewhere in December of 2003, and removed somewhere in January 2004. And the last RS2 item is, uh, I think this is, looks like a gnome ball, and it's called the Crasher. And I'm a, <laughs> I, I have no idea if it actually crashed worlds or not, but that's a pretty funny item to have. It reminds me of that one uh, bug that happened. It's not really a bug, it's like some type of oversight where players were typing in that one... Um, what language was it? Uh, I don't know what language it was, but if you typed in a specific character, like it looked like a U, into the client, and anybody around you that was in the text range would actually just be kicked offline, like out of the game. Uh, the RuneScape would basically just crash, which is hilarious. I think people were using that in a dual arena. And that's, uh, you know, obviously there's more Jmod items, but I'll just leave it at that for now. This was probably going to be a quest item, or maybe it's just there for world building, you know, just to make the world seem more lived in, but this is Ahab's beer, so you can find Ahab in Port Sarum. He's just sitting at one of the tables, and whatever you do, you cannot obtain his beer. It is a unique beer, just called Ahab's beer, and... Um, if you completed the Dragon Slayer quest, uh, Ahab will ask you if you have a boat he can have, which your character will say no. Uh, not sure what the purpose of that is, but it's, it's kind of weird seeing characters, uh, you know, just talk about a quest that you've just done. It, it really adds to the world. I've added that to my own game where, you know, there's unique dialogue if you do quests with random characters, uh. Uh, in my case, I just added it for world building, and I assume that's just what uh, Jagex did as well with this character. Uh, but if you try to telegrab his beer, uh, you still cannot take it. He'll tell you to stop casting spells on it. Uh, you can't pick it up. Uh, you can't obtain it through any means. I have no idea if someone managed to do this, but uh, it is an unobtainable item. I have to assume that maybe someone found out some kind of method of obtaining that, but... I've never heard about it before. Uh, this isn't on the list, but I've seen people smuggle things like the, uh, 
Karam Jaram, the anger weapons from Soul's Bane, which is my favorite quest in the game, by the way. Uh, so I, I have to assume that someone managed to get that beer off the table. I don't know. Like how the spinach roll was supposedly changed due to scams, this is another one that was most likely changed due to scams. This is the display tea. So in RuneScape Classic, you could get a, you know, a unique tea cup near the tea stall. Well, actually on the tea stall, I guess. Uh, it's, it's kind of like on the table north of the stall, but yeah, you could telegrab that. Uh, it wouldn't let you pick it up because I believe the NPC would say something if you tried to. But once you telegrab it, this is a unique cup of tea that uh, is just called a display tea in RuneScape Classic. And I believe it had a different examine text on it. Uh, that said, a nice cup of tea for display only. And uh, when this item was transferred into RuneScape 2, uh, they changed the examine text to say <laughs> a refreshing cuppa. And I, I don't know why they... I guess it was due to like people scamming with it or something. Uh, they made it untradeable as well, which I don't know which one they did first, but it would make more sense if they tried to change the description first and then made it untradeable later. But, uh, yeah, and in uh, RuneScape 2, this item was just uh, just made untradeable. So I, I don't know if this actually still exists or not. Like, in RuneScape 3 now, I, I have no idea. I'm going to have to assume that it actually does. And uh, obviously to display T when it was transferred to RuneScape 2, it's kind of like the Karamjan Warship, which we'll get to. Uh, it's kind of like that where... Uh, the spawn point of it was just removed, so it, it doesn't spawn anymore. And, uh, yeah, no, it's just a unique cup of tea now. It's just called a cup of tea. And uh, if you see that description text on one of your old accounts, that means that uh, it's, you, you have a unique item, even though it's untradeable, you can't really do anything with it. But, uh, yeah, I never hear anybody talking about this one, honestly. You always hear about the broken plate, the broken dragon plate, the... Uh, you know, warship, but you never hear about this untradeable item. Maybe they actually did delete it. I have no idea. No idea. I can only check my archives for certain things, but something like this is... I don't even know if I have this in my archives, but I probably do considering how many cache files I have. But I, I don't really know how to go in depth and, you know, check, check the dates, see what's there, what's not. Oh, I don't have uh, RuneScape 3 ones, by the way. So I can't check RuneScape 3 files or anything like that. Uh, just RuneScape 2 up to, I believe, is 2009 or so. So, yeah. It's a weird item. Everybody already knows about this one, but this is the Karamjan Warship. Or just the Karamja Warship, so... You know, even though this is a very well-known thing, I'll just mention anyway. Uh, in RuneScape 1, you could find this on Glow's Dresser in the Tree Gnome Stronghold. And the spawn for this was removed in RuneScape 2. I think the actual area itself was removed. Like, I don't I don't know if you can still go upstairs in Glow's house. I didn't try that, but... Uh, yeah, no, the spawn for this ship was removed. Uh, there was nothing really you could do with it. It did have a play with option, uh, which said, You pretend to sail the ship across the floor. You soon become very bored and realize you look quite silly. And it's examined text as a model of a Karamjan warship, or just a Karamja warship. And, uh, yeah, as I wrote there, it's considered one of the rarest items. I don't... I, I wouldn't really call it the rarest item, because there's obviously, you know, if we take RuneScape 3, for example, there's, like, one, one of a kind items and stuff like that, but... Uh, yeah, anyway, was removed in RuneScape 2. Not much to say about it, honestly. Uh, there is a few things to say. They actually changed the drop option to a destroy option, I believe, around... Uh, I, I don't actually know. I'm gonna give, like, a range here. Maybe, like, 2012 to 2013 or something. They, they changed the drop to a destroy option, so you can't drop it on the ground. But when you used to be able to, it just floated there. It looked very glitchy. And uh, the model of the boat is actually the same as the charter ships. When you use them on the map, you see like the map and the little boat model floating around. That's like the RuneScape 2 model for the, the Karamja boat. So just figured I'd give you that little piece of trivia as well. But uh, yeah, not much else to say about it there. 
I think they actually mentioned how many accounts that this was on. I should have probably mentioned that, but I think only like 92 players had this or something. Maybe it's like way less. I don't know. I'll have to look into that. This is one I've always wondered about. This is the wilderness ship and the volcano. So both of these are right next to each other. I think the ship is a little bit north, uh, northwest of the volcano, if I'm remembering properly. But uh, yeah, this ship is very strange. It's at the very edge of the wilderness and it's, it does nothing. I always thought that it was gonna be for some type of pirate quest, but it could just be some type of ship from the God Wars because I think you can see similar stuff in the God Wars dungeon. Plus, you know, the wilderness was owned by Zeros. It used to be a Zeroshian kingdom. Um, no idea about the volcano, though. They seemingly just added that for... Uh, just the sake of, like, decoration, I guess. You know, the same for this ship. It's just world-building stuff, like I mentioned earlier. I have a feeling like that's what this stuff is. It's like the anvil that's in the middle of the wilderness as well. There's just a random anvil out there that... I, I don't know who would use that. Uh, I know they put like an NPC around there later on, uh, maybe around like 2004, 2005, I, not, I'm not too sure about the exact date there, but yeah, there's just some strange ship out in the edge of the wilderness, and it looks unfinished, like the ship itself, it looks like it could be made out of wood, but it, it's not like a wood texture, it looks like metal, uh, I don't, I have no idea, it's, it probably is metal, but just the way it looks, it's, it's very strange. Uh, it looks unfinished, like, it looks like a default texture that you would use, like, when you're actually making textures. And they just forgot to apply, like, a wood texture to it or something. Again, it, it could be metal, which would make more sense. It's like, a ship from the God Wars wouldn't still be there if it was made out of wood, probably. But, uh, I mean, there is stuff preserved in the God Wars dungeon, obviously. It's just frozen over, though. Yeah, I don't know what else to say about this. Um... Oh yeah, something with the God Wars, if you examine the burnt skeletons near the broken ship, because it's like there was a crew there, uh, it says a victim of war, it looks like he's been dead for a while now. Uh, there's a few of these skeletons laying around. Uh, I don't know if they all have that examined text, but the one closest to the ship does if I'm remembering properly. There's also, uh, you know, barrels and cannons on the ship with the same texture as the ship itself. Which, that, that's what I meant by unfinished. It's literally the same texture. The same, like... The, the barrels are the same type of metal, but there's also wood on them? Like, it's like half metal, half wood, and then the rest of the ship is just metal. I don't know, there's something very strange about it. I'm gonna have a screenshot of it anyway on the video, so you guys know what I'm talking about. But, uh, yeah, that's it for the ship and the volcano. Again, I have nothing to say about the volcano itself, because there's just nothing to do there. Uh, unless we're taking into consideration, like, OSRS. Or you can make the malediction pieces, or the, uh, <laughs> whatever the other shield was called. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember the names of those. I'm mostly just an RS2 player, I don't... You know, I play OSRS a lot, but not... I don't participate in, like, the new content too much, so... Yeah. This is a pretty funny one. I think a lot of people know about this one as well. But this is the Hex Edit Detected item. And this isn't really like an item in the game. It's just, uh, well, okay, it is. It is an item in the game, but you have to get it through hex editing. Where if you try to hex edit, like, let's say that, you know, you try to hex edit your gold amount, right? Your coins and you try to make it a different amount, or you try to spawn yourself an item that you don't actually have uh, by changing the IDs around, client side. Uh, you'll be given a hex edit detected item in its place. Uh, this was to stop users from looking into the code of the game to see what other new items they're about to release, because the Abyssal Whip and some other item was discovered before they were actually released using this method. So Jagex wanted to uh, put something in the game. Oh, the other item was a granite mall, actually. All right, they probably found other items that way as well. Someone, uh, they, they, they hid the rotten potato that way, um, before this was a thing. Uh, so they named it, like, a rotten potato so people looking into the code wouldn't suspect anything of it being a employee item, JMod item. But, yeah, you would be given this hex edit detected if you 
just tried to look into the code basically like it would replace the item you just tried to give yourself with the item id replacement it would just give you this fish looking thing which is the edit detected and when you examined it it said your ip has been logged and passed to customer support which is hilarious and that was just used for intimidation because that there's no possible way they could well at least i don't think there's a possible way they could have seen who's editing something considering it's client side only they would have to actually be scanning your computer for like a hex editor <laughs> which that uh, that would be messed up if they're you know they would actually be seeing if you have a hex editor open on your computer that would be a little bit suspicious it's like that one uh, sonic fan game where if you try to look up cheats for it online what was that called like sonic uh, it was like a a mod of like not a mod but like a recreation of sonic battle or something that was funny but yeah, no, that's just client side, most definitely. Um, yeah, uh, this item was added on August 2005 as well. And like like I said there, it was just added to try to mess with people using hex editors to try to get them to stop using it. Uh, there's probably better ways to implement items without other players knowing it. Like, uh, how about not implementing the items first in the game's code? How about just use it? you know, offline for test the items out offline and then just release them into the game when they're ready to be released, a day one. I don't know, but yeah, it's just, just a funny, funny thing there. I was just going to skip this one since everybody knows about this, but this is the noted item replacements where uh, they couldn't really delete items from the code back then for whatever reason. Uh, I'm not too knowledgeable on that kind of stuff, but they added placeholders to the game for uh, items that, you know, they're, they're basically going to replace them later. It's just placeholders. Uh, and they, they named these item replacements very strange things. Uh, these placeholders very strange things, I should say. Like, there, there's one... Uh, some of these were actually viewable when the quick chat feature was implemented in... Uh, I, I actually don't remember what year it was, but... Um, yeah, you could actually see this in quick chat, like, you know, people use that thing if you were muted, you could just type if you wanted to buy something, and one of those things could be a 9mm revolver, a rotten net, a weird snake, it's just, it's very, very strange things. Um, but yeah, I was just gonna skip this one, I'll just go ahead and talk about the unused, discontinued, and other random events that were in the game at one point, which, uh... You, you guys probably know about some of these, like the uh, Lost and Found event that uh, was actually in the game. It wasn't, you know, unused or anything. Uh, you would be teleported to the Abyss when you're trying to cast a spell sometimes, a teleportation spell. And uh, you had to pull an eye with, uh, you had to pull a lever without an eye on it. There was like four of them, three of them with eyes. And then you would just be given a lol rune and three air runes. And uh, yeah, I don't... Really, no, I guess that was to try to stop botting more, but, uh, or maybe people were actually training a lot with the teleportation spells where they would just keep teleporting over and over again, uh, even though it was pretty expensive back in the day, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know why they bothered putting that one in. Uh, the candlelight one was pretty interesting, actually, I'll just read off the description I wrote here. In this event, you are teleported to a church where you help someone by the name of Poyas Pete light candles inside of said church. The player would be given a lighter and be told only to light the candles that were already burnt down to the bases. I hope I explained that properly. And, uh, you know, I, I should probably show screenshots of the candlelight event. Uh, I think if you are using, like, rune light or something, you can actually view further outside of maps. I, I think it's right next to the graveyard event. I probably should have wrote that on the blog. But uh, the Gravedigger event, you could actually see it to the uh, northeast, I think. I think I'm remember. Like, I remember actually seeing that. I'm like, what? what is that? Because I actually found out about this candlelight event um, just like a year and a half ago, actually. So it's like pretty, pretty new to me. I never knew this thing actually. Uh, I would say existed, but I don't know if this was in the game or not. I heard it's, it was only in the game for a few hours. I don't know how true that is, though. I don't have a source on that. And uh, you also had, you know, the Strange Box, Swarm, Poison Gas, the Lost Pirate, Watchman, Axe Handle, Dr. Ford, 
and the Tangle Vine, which uh, lasted a few hours as well. And I remember one of the Jame mods telling a story about them going back to the offices to remove that one, because it just kept killing everybody. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, here's one. This is an interesting one that I'm pretty sure nobody has heard about. Like, no, I just want to say, uh, I would, like, never make something up just to be funny or anything like that, but this... There's a supposed uh, random event that I saw on a forum back in the day. Uh, it was a forum post talking about a worm. Like, an actual worm event when you're mining. At least I think it was for mining. This was so long ago that I don't... I don't really remember it, but... Supposedly when you're mining, a giant worm would come out of the ground to... do something. I, I don't know what it was going to do. Maybe it would attack the player like some other random events. It's kind of like the... Uh, rock golem random event that used to be a thing. Um, yeah, uh, you, you, if this was like an actual event though, I think it would actually be in that Enchanted Valley area. So maybe this is like someone mis misremembering something. Uh, it's not a misremembering from me though, because like, I definitely saw this, someone talking about it on a forum back in the day. Uh, I don't know what forum it was either, I wish I remembered. Uh, and this one was actually unused. Uh, this was in the game's cache on the 29th of March, 2004, and it's the Savage Bird event, and this was the old model of a, uh, terror bird, um, except painted red with orange eyes, and just, like, gray feet, gray beak, it, it looks like, uh, Dragon Axe <laughs> from, from recent times. Um, yeah, uh... It's like, like the Dragon Axe and OSRS. Uh, just like the colors, I mean. Uh, no, this thing would look terrifying. Uh, it, it genuinely did. It's just... It, I, I don't know what they were thinking. I guess that's why they removed it. It probably would have just... That would have actually scared me if I saw it in the game. Especially if it made like noises like it was just screaming or something. It, it, that would actually suit it pretty well. Would actually... Would actually suit it. Uh, what else did I write here? Uh, I have... Another piece of trivia would be that when summoning was released, some familiars could attack and even de uh, defeat aggressive random events. That's that's right. That was uh, there's a video of some of those actually happening. Um, like someone got the uh, Jekyll event um, and the uh, Turpentine event, and they don't actually drop anything when they when they're defeated. So if you got your summoning familiar to actually attack those, they wouldn't drop anything. Uh, it's it's like in RuneScape Classic, RuneScape 1, where uh, that Kite Neeks person was using his, um, you know, program to actually defeat bankers and everything as well, and it just, it's... Uh, they, they didn't drop anything either, obviously. It's not like the, it's <laughs> That would be kind of childish to think that they would actually drop someone's entire bank or something. But, uh, yeah, I guess that did actually happen in OSRS, where the... Uh, that dead man glitch that happened where it's like people were dropping bank keys on like the vanilla like actual normal game <laughs> but uh yeah that's it for like the random event section there's obviously much more i can talk about there but maybe i'll save it for another time this one is a little bit interesting so we have gray zag's imps here and uh gray zag in runescape classic runescape one I uh, used to just be a regular dark wizard, but he was in the same spot, if I'm remembering properly. And he would summon a bunch of, like, dark imps. Like, they're just... They're regular imps, they're just, like, darker in color. I don't know why this was the case. I mean, I, I know that he was a part of the imp catch request. He gives unique dialogue in RS2, uh, saying that, you know, he's the one that had uh, the beads stolen and everything, but... In RuneScape Classic, he actually had no dialogue, and his examine text was just the same as a regular Dark Wizard. Uh, he didn't have a unique name. Um, and then RuneScape 2 came along, and uh, he would actually still spawn the uh, the Dark Ems for a while. Uh, he was combat level 41 in early RS2. And then, you know, eventually they just gave him the talk option, and he... Does it, he didn't spawn any more of those dark imps. I've heard a few explanations on why he didn't, uh, or why the imps were removed. Uh, there was that one imp box item that I have no idea about because I never used it. 
<laughs> I never read up on it either, so I can't really say much on that. But uh, speaking of Dark Wizards, we got a Necromancer in the Necromancer's Tower, which is a very mysterious place. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with any quests except for Zogar Flesh Eaters. It has dialogue in there, but it's not part of the quest, it's optional. Uh, there's like a book on the shelf that talks about the quest itself. Uh, I guess it's like a hint that the quest exists. But aside from that, there's uh, an NPC in there called Feasel Bomb. I'm talking about RS2 right now. Uh, the Necromancer was in RuneScape 1. The, uh, I think his name was Invergor or something. Uh, you can probably see it on the screen there. But uh, his, uh, his name, if you examine him, the Necromancer in RuneScape 1, RuneScape Classic, uh, he actually still had that name. Uh, it was only on his examine text for some reason, though. Or, uh, sorry, that's when you were actually tried talking to him. It wasn't examine text. He, it said, In regard, the necromancer is not interested in talking if you try to speak with him. But, uh, yeah, no, there was no quest relating there to... It's just, just nothing to do, basically. It's just a sight to see, which is really cool. I like stuff like that where there's just... You know, no quests, no items to be gained, uh, except for uh, Zamorak robes, because those are pretty good early on. Uh, so I guess you could just go there for Zamorak robes. And uh, what else was I going to say? Yeah, there was a bug or oversight in RuneScape Classic where uh, this was in like RS1. Uh, it's always been there as far as I'm aware, but you could just keep having the Necromancer spawn zombies infinitely and it would just fill the entire room up. Uh, it was pretty funny, but in RuneScape 2, uh, you have like this Fiesel Bomb character on the bottom floor, and uh, I forgot what dialogue he actually says, but he's shorter than every other character in the game, like every other adult character, but he's not a child though either. He's a completely unique NPC, which is actually really interesting. And then upstairs you just have uh, Invrigor, hopefully I'm saying that properly. And he still summons zombies and everything, but there's just no quest relating to him. It's just really interesting. And I have some more information here on my blog about it. And uh, by the way, I'm probably going to be skipping some points on my blog, so if you want to see the entire thing, you can, you know, visit my site, and it'll my entire blog will be there. I'm going to be making more of these, by the way, on different video games like Dark Souls 2 I had in mind. But uh, anyway... Uh, that's it for the Necromancer Tower. I don't really have anything else to say about it. Just very interesting. Very interesting stuff. Just an entire area, an entire tower that just... You know, even though it's not that big, it's just strange that there's nothing to do there. There's probably going to be a quest in uh, RS1 that was, you know, going to be there, but... So this is the interesting case of the extra inventory spaces in RuneScape Classic, RuneScape 1 that were never added to the game. Uh, this was just an idea by the Gowers before they added membership. Because, um, you know, the advertisements weren't making enough for them, so... They signed a deal with this one uh, company called Consodata, and they had a Yopton program where players could fill out a survey in the game itself. And I have a screenshot of it here, which I'll show, because uh, it's, it's just um, embedded on my blog. So, uh, yeah, you know, you could fill out this entire thing, and there was way more than this, uh, just one screenshot. There's like seven different pages you had to fill out. That's just a estimate. Uh, I do have all of them saved. I don't, I don't know if I'll put them up on the screen, but uh, yeah, there was just a whole bunch of stuff to fill out. And if you would have filled this out, you would have gotten... Uh, how many inventory spaces? I think it was... I think it was five. Uh, yeah, five additional inventory spaces that you would have got for that, and... I guess they thought that was too immoral to actually place on the players, so they just... They... You know, didn't put it in the game. So... Not much else to be said about that, aside from the... Uh, other screenshots, which I may or may not show. Uh, sorry if I... If I don't show something when I say I'm gonna show something. Because this is a very long video, it's uh, currently like one hour and two minutes at the time of me uh, editing it. I'm kind of doing it like a few days at a time, um, but yeah, so uh, apologies for that, but let's go on to the next topic. I'm not so sure if I'll spend a while talking about this one, because there, there's like way too much to actually discuss, but uh, I'll just go over some glitches that were in uh, 
well, and oversights too that were in RuneScape Classic, RuneScape 1. Uh, obviously, you have to put this in its own category because if I were to list every single glitch in RuneScape 2, it would just it would be way too much. It, there's no way I can list every single glitch in the game. <laughs> and th there's even some unknown ones that weren't ever found out about, so... Yeah, I'll just not... Just not talk about all those, but we will talk about RuneScape Classic ones. I think I have them all on here. I just won't mention them all on the video. You can look at my blog to see them. But, uh, you know, we got the infamous super strength beard sheet that everybody knows about. Uh, and this was just an oversight. This wasn't a glitch at all. You could literally just keep drinking beers until your strength was 99. And um, I think that there was some type of training method with that that I'm not remembering. Or that, that might have been more to do with wines, I think, because those, those lower your attack. But I mean, you know, the, the beer also does that, so... Uh, yeah, I don't... <laughs> I, I never... Obviously, I never train with that, because I started playing in 06, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's just go to the knife glitch. So this uh, bug slash glitch took place in 2002. And I'm gonna try to explain this without reading off my blog, but from what I remember, uh, you could literally just put an entire, like, you fill your entire inventory with knives except for your first combat item that you want to use. And you don't have to fill the entire inventory with knives, you could just have a few of them. But, uh, knives had actual stats in the code, and I think if you dropped your first item that was in your inventory, so your weapon, uh, and then you started walking at this, or, or sorry, no, you, um, right-clicked on your item, uh, your weapon, right? And then you started, or you started walking, and then you right-click it, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words here, I probably should have a script, but I don't. Um, yeah, so you right-click it, so the item menu comes up for the item, but you're still walking, right? So, as soon as you stop, I think you can hit equip, and then you would gain the stats, but multiple of them, from all the knives in your inventory. So you would have some incredible, like, max hit. I, I don't actually know what the max hit was, but people were abusing this. Uh, I think for a short period of time, anybody that entered the wilderness with knives was just, like, just killed immediately. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I don't really have too much information on this. There's more information on my blog, but... Uh, yeah, no, it was just, it was a really funny glitch. I, I'm pretty sure you might have even been able to hit hundreds, I'm not sure. Not exactly too sure. The max hit around the, in the, around that time was, uh, I, it was around 88. Um, like I said in the blog, I'm not sure if clanks or uh, steel gauntlets existed yet. And dragon weapons may have been out at the time of that glitch, so I'm not sure what the max hit would have been. But, uh, yeah, I'm also not sure if it takes into account the first item that you dropped, or it's just the knives. So maybe weapon doesn't even matter. Could probably get, like, a bronze bronze sword or something and just drop that. And uh, everybody knows about the party hat duplication glitch that Kite Neeks caused. So not gonna be talking about that or anything. And, uh, you know, I, I talk more about auto rune and what it allowed you to do there with uh, <laughs> the player being able to make themselves invisible at the Makeover Mage, which I said is similar to, you know, female characters having beards. And, uh... <laughs> I'm not gonna read that last part. I'm not monetizing this video, but... You know, I'm just I'm just not gonna read that part out in case some type of rule changes, so... Yeah, it's just, just funny stuff there. And... Uh, I have a whole bunch of patch notes here that were... It's just various glitches, bugs, and oddities, uh, but I'm not going to mention all these in the video. I think I actually got every single one. Like, every single bug or glitch or oversight that existed in Recipe Classic, I think I got them all in my blog. I'm not sure if I... If it's 100%, I'm, I'm not certain, but... Uh, yeah, I guess I'll mention the Waterworld glitch, because that was actually pretty interesting. You know, when logging in sometimes, there would just be water everywhere. Like, all the ground tiles is just replaced with water. Are just replaced with water. But, yeah, interesting stuff there. So, I'm probably not going to show this part of the blog on the video, because 
I just want to avoid any kind of drama that might come up from that, but I, I just really want to talk about this. So there's this, uh, this blog point is just called the statue of the warrior that's in the wilderness uh, that people thought was attributed to like, it's a tribute to like the old knight. That's what people thought. But uh, even a J mod uh, said that supposedly, supposedly, uh, I really don't think he did. I think that the chat logs were fake and that a YouTuber wanted to um, just get views from this, uh, just for his channel to get money. And you know what, I don't want to mention his name on here, but he stole footage from me and from other people and he, he never gives credits or gives credit to anybody. Um, now he made a video on the old knight, uh, he made a video on a lot of other obscure runescape stuff as well, which, you know, I just at least give credit, you know what I mean? Um, now I have screenshots on my blog here, there's some screenshots that are taken from the runescape wiki, it's not a whole lot, but uh, I believe that the wiki got these from old blog sites. And there's, I tried looking, there's like barely any sources for this stuff. So if you guys know the credits uh, for like, let's say like the Waterworld screenshot from like RuneScape 1, RuneScape Classic, for example. Like if you know who took these, uh, just let me know and I will credit these people. But, you know, uh, there was this entire situation where people thought that Wilderness statue was the old knight when it's not. And if those chat logs with the Jmod are real, he's just blatantly wrong. Uh, the J mod is just completely wrong. Um, you know, it's. I explain why, and like how incorrect this is, on my uh, on my blog. But it, there's just something I want to point out, and that's the fact that you're trying to get. Think about this for a second. You're making a video about the old knight. Uh, you're monetizing it, and. You're making up chat logs about a man that's dead. He is dead, and you're trying to make money off of it by just making up a story about him and how this statue belongs to him on the wilderness when it doesn't. Uh, I'm glad they actually gave a tribute to him uh, in old school RuneScape and during like the anniversary events. Like that, those are very cool and respectful. But you know what's not respectful is. It's such a it's such a strange thing to do. Do you know what I mean? It is such a very strange thing to do, and there's gonna be people that are that know who I'm talking about, um, and just like don't harass anybody, don't go after anybody. Uh, I do not condone any harassment on any individuals. Just uh, you know, leave leave everybody alone. Don't even bother typing anything to them. But uh, yeah, no, it's. It's just a very strange situation. Uh, he's So, you know how the old knight passed away in 2006? Right? Everybody knows the story. That statue was added in 2004. That wilderness statue was added in 2004. So, I just, I really wanted to point that out. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's... For a Jmod not to know that either... Like, he can just look at when certain things were added. It, there would be no reason for that J mod to lie. You know what I mean? I, you know, there's been some very questionable J mods in the past, but like, really, there, no, there's just no reason to. None. And th this person calls himself, and not the J mod, the uh, actual YouTuber calls himself a RuneScape historian, too. And uh, I, I wrote on my blog, more like a RuneScape history rewriter. And there's just some other stuff that he said that's very strange. He supposedly got in contact with uh, the very first RuneScape player, um, you know, Rab. And I, I don't know if that's all true or not, and at this point I don't care. But, uh, yeah. So this was always another weird one for me. This is Tarn's Lair, and uh, I, I shouldn't say entirely weird because it was useful for me on my hardcore. Uh, I think it was around late 2016 or maybe 2017 when I first started that. Because uh, you can get uh, ranging potions there. You can actually get three-dose ranging potions and a lot of other strange 
items that you would think a zombie wouldn't drop. But again, this is RuneScape where black dragons drop uh, chocolate cake and, you know, like demons drop tuna and stuff like that. But, uh, oh yeah, the Anku drops are pretty pretty odd as well. So I guess, you know, now that I think about it, I guess it's not too out of place. But uh, thanks for the OSRS wiki for uh, these, uh, these drop tables. Uh, we got level 61 to 80 zombies, which drop... Uh, I'm not going to read this all off, but for example, they drop the ranging potions, like I said. Rune nails, fire orbs, magic logs, ring of dueling with three charges, uh, holy molds, one and one at 28 for a piece of garlic, uh, cups of tea, and you got poison spears as well. And uh, the level 81 to 100 drops... Uh, some black items, like a black square shield, black axe, uh, rune battle axe. Uh, 1 and 1 are 28 for adamant bolts, and then we got black nails. And uh, 1 and 1 28 for an adamant bar and a pot of cream. And uh, I wrote this down in my blog here, but uh, I, think I'm, I think I actually said that on every point now. I, I'm not- I'm actually not trying to promote my blog at all. I'm actually literally just saying that, uh, <laughs> just because, you know, I want to just say that I, I do have it there. That's like what I'm kind of reading off of a little bit. It's not- not a scripted video, but I am reading a little bit off my blog here, but, um, yeah, in my own game, Crescent Quest, I, uh, I added enemies like this as well, and I think Jagex added these enemies in here for the same reason is that uh, maybe there's some items that they thought were unobtainable or they just didn't bother checking, so they wanted to slap a whole bunch of items on an enemy just in case that one really was unobtainable or maybe unobtainable for a specific player, like a peer, or someone didn't want to complete a certain quest, so they wanted to make items easier to obtain or, you know, get items for clue scrolls easier. Uh, just stuff like that. Uh, that's my, my theory anyway. Uh, this is also the only place besides the, uh, Barbarian Assault, um, you know, High Gamble, uh, where you can get a Granite Helm because it's, well, I mean, you need Slayer for it, but, yeah, at the end of Tarn Slayer, you got the Terror Dogs there, so, yeah, it's the only place where you can get a Granite Helm. It's very, very strange area, but pretty cool, though. It's a pretty cool area. And to go along with this, we got these strange barrels from RuneScape Classic, which, uh, you know, obviously they're in RuneScape too, but uh, I actually don't know if they change anything from RuneScape Classic to RuneScape 2 regarding these barrels. But uh, these barrels uh, have a 20 and 30 chance to spawn a monster. Again, thanks for the RuneScape Classic wiki for these uh, item drops here. Uh, tw 27 out of 30 to spawn an item and a 3 out of 30 chance for a barrel to explode causing 0 to 20 damage Which does not spawn a monster or an item and the player also has a 7 out of 8 chance of failing to open the barrel Which decreases the player's attack by 1 to 3 levels Which uh, isn't surprising considering uh, if you fail like any other stat check in that dungeon like for example the strength boulder It'll lower your strength too if I recall um, 7 out of 30 chance to spawn nothing and the enemy drops that can come out of those barrels are a Chaos Dwarf, Black Knight, Dark Warrior, Dark Wizard, Deathwing, Deadly Red Spider, Giant, Giant Bat, Hobgoblin, Giant Spider, Moss Giant, Rat, uh, Scorpion, Skeleton, and a bunch of different level zombies. And uh, the skeletons are the same, bats are, sorry, no, rats are the same with the varying levels. And you just have a whole bunch of random items. Uh, you can get half a meat pie, half a red berry pie. Thurgo would love that. Um, I'm surprised he doesn't hang out there in that dungeon. Should probably leave his shore that he lives on. Uh, you know, you got the uh, elusive spinadrolls that can drop out of there. Uh, one dose defense, prayer, strike potion. And uh, a 10 out of 16,384 for... I'm pretty sure, like, almost every cert in the game, that's... Not not every cert at the same time, but like any kind of cert you can get. Which if you don't know, like certs are just, you know, the certificates for items, kind of like notes. Except for RuneScape 1. Um, there's a pretty high chance of just getting rocks. Uh, caskets, 100 coins. And <laughs> you got the Paramaya Rest Ticket. I should actually include that on the list. 
but I didn't. Uh, you know, there's not much to be said about the Paranoia Inn, but uh, yeah. You got the ship ticket, which is also another weird item. Which I'm not going to get into that right now, but uh, yeah. No, it, it basically just drops pretty much anything. <laughs> Uh, just very, very strange items. Um, there is an item that your your drop rate is actually affected if you don't have an item already on you, like a rope, I think. It gives you a higher chance of receiving a rope if you don't have one. Which is very strange, and I said it reminds me of the drop rates in RS2 of the uh, shield right half from the Gorax. But, uh, yeah, just very, very odd stuff. And uh, right below that, we got the Out of Bounds, uh, which, you know, I, I, this is just me talking about a whole bunch of stuff that's out of bounds in RuneScape. You got the God Wars dungeon area that was meant to be a path leading to the Zamorak boss room. Uh, you know, there's just a, a whole bunch of, like, sunken stuff under the water. It's actually pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. You got a whole bunch of bones and, like, dead Zamorakian warriors down there. And you were meant to swim through that entire thing to get to the other side instead of just jumping over the uh, ice platform there in the God Wars dungeon. Which, uh, by the way, I haven't actually visited too much. I didn't do too much God Wars dungeon in my history of the game. But, uh, let's see, what other, other stuff out of bounds did I have listed here? Yeah, in certain random event rooms, uh, there's like a whole bunch of stuff in the background. For example, the Drill Demon event. Where you, uh, I'm pretty sure this was explorable at one point, where you could actually walk into all the tents, or not not walk inside, but you can like look inside them. And there's an entire courtyard to the uh, to the training grounds, which is pretty interesting. And uh, there's this one out of bounds glitch that someone found. I, I forgot what their names were. Uh, I can't remember what what their uh, what their names were, but. Uh, yeah, it's like this one hacking, they call themselves like a hacking group, even though it's just, you know, bug abuse, bug abusers. Um, yeah, so this, like, bug abuse group uh, found this one glitch where you could actually return to Tutorial Island in OSRS. Uh, I'm actually, I forgot what they use, so it might have actually been possible in RS2, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's obviously so many fail-safes in RuneScape, but when they return back to Tutorial Island using a glitch, they just cross the ocean pretty much. Uh, the Iron Man tutors said, you know, you shouldn't be here, or something along those lines. Uh, just have a whole bunch of fail-saves. Uh, there's some that were actually discovered by Rendy in Mauritania, where if you try to go there on a level 3, it's like... It, the snails there will try to teleport you back to, uh... You know, that one temple where the Guardian Dog is for the Priest and Peril quest. And... Uh, a random NPC from Temple Trekking. I forgot what his name was, but it's the old man there. He'll actually teleport you to the same spot. A feral vampire will jump down out of nowhere from the sky and teleport you back to the church just outside of Mortania again, just like the other two. Very there, There's so many fail-safes in the game. I'm actually curious what we don't know. Very, very odd stuff. So this is a pretty mysterious one. This is the monkey skull from the Monkey Madness quest. Or, you know, just on Ape Atoll in general inside the dungeon, the Marimbo dungeon. Uh, so the, you could never actually obtain this item. Uh, it was in the game. You could actually see it behind a locked door inside that dungeon I just mentioned. Uh, the door was just never openable. You can never unlock that door. And it just, the skull there always remained unused until a specific year. Uh, I think it might have been 2000... Okay, yeah, no, it was 2010. February 22nd, 2010, with the release of Zombie Implings, where you have a 1 in 3,000 chance of it giving you the skull. And uh, in OSRS, it was made available in Mar on March 5th, 2015. And, uh, yeah, no, so what this skull actually does is it allows you to get a, a talisman, just like any other monkey talisman. Except when you use this talisman, it turns you into a uh, one of like one of those gorilla guards, except with a blue face. It looks very glitchy, like it's unfinished. Uh, but the talisman itself has always been in the game as well, along with the monkey skull, and that has a blue face on it too. Uh, the talisman, I mean, not the monkey skull itself, which is very odd considering 
you know, if that's actually a glitch, why would the, uh, or, you know, like, just an unfinished texture, why would it also be on the talisman as well? So, uh, I have no idea, but yeah, no, the, it just turns you into a gorilla with a blue face. So, you know, no idea what that could actually be about. Uh, the weird thing is, the examine text on the talisman says a magical talisman in the shape of a monkey head, the eyes glow bright red, which... The monkey model itself does not have red eyes, so I don't know why it says that. Uh, no, it's just the, the blue model, like the blue face, looks like unintended. So it, they probably meant for like a different kind of model to be implemented, like maybe like a really scary version or maybe like a skeletal monkey considering it's a skull that you use to get it. But, uh, yeah. No, it's just very strange stuff. But yeah, no, in like 2007... Uh, they actually changed the item description despite it being unreleased. Uh, it says a magical talisman in the shape of a mysterious monkey head. The eyes glow bright red. So they, they literally added the word mysterious on it. Uh, that's probably just to mess with players looking into the game's code. The, uh, you know, unreleased items and stuff like that. But uh, it's maybe they always had a plan for it, they just never got around to it. But uh, was the original intent really a blue-faced gorilla, or was it something else? So here we have the 2007 Crystal Axe. Uh, this actually has a model, um, and obviously, you know, it went unused. It was never in the game until, like, RuneScape 3 and then OSRS. But yeah, this 2007 Crystal Axe has a model, and it has a few sound effects. Uh, one for a slash and crush attack, uh, one for recharging, because... You know, this would have been a reward from the Isaac Loaf request, just like the Crystal Saul, you would have to recharge it. And um, it also has uh, the sound effect for hitting the tree, obviously. Uh, which, you know, it's not like a rat, it's not a typical axe sound, it just sounds like crystals when you're hitting it, which is pretty neat. Um, now, they probably removed this as to not devalue the Dragon Axe, but my theory is that it probably would have done something different. It probably would have had a special effect. Uh, you know, because there, there's no way they would have added an item that would have devalued the Dragon Axe, but you could say that's the reason why they removed it in the first place. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned on my blog here that, you know, I don't actually like the look of the OSRS Dragon Axe, because that was a period of the game when, you know, that one J mod, which I'm not going to mention the name of, was replacing all the elf models with their own models and they were changing like the design of like all the characters which i think they actually reverted some of those thankfully but yeah no it doesn't it doesn't fit old school and when someone confronted the jmod about this uh she said that is it supposed to look old school which i i have a feeling like that's not even sarcasm I have a feeling like they generally forgot that the game is supposed to look old school because, you know, you're working on old school. Uh, this was a RuneScape 3 dev, by the way. Again, don't seek anybody out. Don't harass anybody. I'm just giving you information. So, uh, yeah, no, the Crystal Axe model in OSRS, it's just, it looks way too cartoony for the actual medieval aesthetic of the game. But, uh, yeah, no, I just don't like the look of the new new stuff they're adding to old school but anyway this 2007 crystal axe looks really good like it looks really amazing it, it fits the game perfectly because i mean everything else back then pretty much did uh before they started making it really fantastical like with runescape 3 it's you know obviously you know you had xanaris but there's there's just something about the old rs2 runescape that's you know it's a very dark medieval setting and you, you have humor in there, obviously. You got the British humor. You got, you know, some fantastical stuff in there. You're traveling through the fairy rings and everything. But at the same time, like, just the overall aesthetic of the game, it was much darker, you know? Uh, whether that was intended or not, I don't know. But, I mean, just look at the Barrow's armor sets compared to the new stuff, you know? Just, just throwing my thoughts out there. Again, I don't... Please do not harass anybody. I don't condone any harassment on anybody. None of the de none of the developers deserve that. Um, but yeah, there's a 2007 Crystal X. And then like the last thing I mentioned here on my blog, I'm still writing this by the way. So I'm probably gonna make a part two. So feel free to subscribe and like the video and all that. 
Uh, I don't know how to sound sincere when I say that, because everybody else says that, but, you know, I'm trying my best. Uh, <laughs> uh, the last thing right here on my blog is just talking about the RS2 beta model for the Dragon Square Shield. Uh, it was peach colored. And I'm, I'm assuming that was like a placeholder, so... I, I very much doubt they intended for the square shield to, uh, you know, actually look orangish, like a like a peach color. It, it's very, you know, I know peaches aren't orange, but I'm saying like it, it's like a mixture. It's a very strange color. If you could actually see it, maybe I'll put a screenshot up here, just like the crystal axe. But uh, yeah, uh, I guess I could also point out a piece of trivia that. The shield left half was accidentally sold by Legends Guild in the RS2 beta, which is pretty funny. But uh, yeah, stick around for part two. And, you know, uh, I don't, like, I, I definitely have a whole lot more to talk about, but it's probably not going to be as long as this video. Maybe it will be. But yeah, stick around, everyone. Thanks for watching. This is me, Time Liar G, and I will see you later.